just about 18 minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock. Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, as we commemorate World Water Day, we will focus on water resources and how we as individuals can better manage and preserve this precious resource. And so joining us this morning is Watershed Planner at the Water Resources Agency at WASA, Ms. Marissa McMillan. Ms. McMillan, good morning. Hello and good morning, Kimberly. And hello and good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. And happy World Water Day to yes, you. Yes, very much happy World Water Day. <laughs> Now let's jump right in because I know that the, uh, well I understand that they, they have a global campaign every year. So yes. tell me about the global campaign for this year and even how we can get involved. Okay, so the global campaign this year is Accelerating Change. So basically what it is, is that, um, and the reason why we would have focused on it is because when you look at all the statistics as it relates to achieving the sustainable development goals to 2030, um, we are a little bit behind. So we want to focus on all the different actions that could help us to accelerate to be able to get to where we need to get to. Yeah. So one thing I should tell you with regards to Trinidad and Tobago, there have been a number of different initiatives as it relates to, you know, accelerating that campaign. So we would have invested in a number of different projects. There is the Crew Plus projects. Um, and what it, it actually speaks to is actually um, investing in ensuring that we do have proper water and wastewater management practices mm -hmm. at the watershed level. And that's actually taking place in um, Charlottesville in Tobago and there are a number of different projects on the local scene in the adopt river but we'll get into that of yes. course yes no I know that the the organization state and corporate are doing their part but how, yes. how can the average citizen get involved for example is it as simple as turning off your taps when you're finished yes. using them or if it is, is not in use is it as simple as that or more can be done okay so yes it is, as it is as simple as managing water within your own homes, yeah. right? So, you know, there's a lot of information out there with regards to when you're brushing your teeth, you know, you turn off the tap. Um, if you have any leaks within your house, make sure that you, you, that you fix it, you know. Um, consider the length of your showers. Mm. You know, so there are a number of different things. There is for every different sector, because water impacts on everyone. There's so many things that they can do. There's on-farm water management. And one of the things that I should also mention to you is that we do have the adopt -a river program. So that's one of the ways, if you're unsure, if you're a little unsure as to what type of projects that you can actually get into, the Water and Sewage Authority does have the adopt -a river program, which focus on protecting um, our watersheds rivers or streams and there are a number of different projects that persons can get involved in yeah. right within their entire community yes so now yes. one of the things we think about uh, when we talk about water and preserving water is the very real issue of climate change yes how is climate change impacting and we don't have to focus on TNT but how is it impacting that resource is it that in 50 years we're going to see less water than we're seeing now or less water is going to be available to us to use Okay, so yes, climate change is having a significant impact. Um, when you look at um, climate policy mm -hmm. and um, when you look at the different studies, we are in the Caribbean and in particular Trinidad and Tobago is expected to get um, drier. We are mm -hmm. also expected to have um, more intense rainfall and hydroclimatic events. And that would impact on us in a number of different ways. Um, with regards to things like flooding, um, availability of water within a dry season. So we all have to do our part. And there are a number of things that we can actually do. We can consider how we would use the land around us. Um, and when I say that, I, I mean, are we planting my trees when we, when we cut it down? So we have to consider a number of different things. We also need to consider, remember water is a cycle. So when we pave our, our, our yards, where does the water go from there can it actually infiltrate into the ground or is it going to wash straight off into rivers and stream and cause a number of um, issues like flooding downstream one of the other things that I should let you know is um, the quality of water is being impacted by a number of different activities um, there's the dumping there is a lot of release of all sorts of different chemicals into our waterways and one of the things that you need to know is that yes the water is under stress however we need to ensure that we protect the quality and the quantity of water and 
our all our activities do actually impact on it. So now, in terms of the quality and quantity, is this where Wasa steps in to ensure that we get the best quality coming through our taps? Um, yes, Wasa does step in to ensure that we do have the best quality of water coming through our taps. Um, as you would know, that we have like the third best uh, water in the in the entire world. Um, but beyond that, it's not. A water supply thing it is a water resource management um, thing and we all do play a part mm -hmm. so if you release say oils from your homes um, and you really or in if you have the um, cottage in different cottage industries you have a vehicle shop where does the oil actually go you were seeing with a lot of development now, a lot of this oil is actually going into our rivers. Where does the oil from your, your, um, from your food industry goes, right? So there are a number of different things. What about pesticides and uh, fertilizer runoff? Where does that go? Mm -hmm. Into our rivers and streams. And all those things impact on our water resources. So then, Ms. McMillan, for example, we love a lot of fried food in Trinidad yes, and Tobago, yes. right? So we fry the food, we have the oil that goes down in the in, in the uh, drain. Is it that we're not supposed to discard of it in the drain? Like, should we discard of different things, as you mentioned, the mechanics with the oil and that sort of thing? Is it that we should not put it in the drain and it makes its way to the river? Or how else can we get rid of this waste? Okay, so I would say for the food industry, well, you know that um, once it's, it's established properly, you would tend to have the oil and grease trap. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, there are also a number of companies locally that would actually retrieve, you know, tend to retrieve that. Did right. So that's a, that. so, okay. Yeah. So that's some information that we could probably provide to you guys. Yes. You know, very, later. very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's switch gears a bit because I know that the Water Loss Conference is happening at Hilton. Uh, yes. Tell us some of the I mean, the minister would have spoken about it at length, but just remind yeah. us exactly the purpose for the conference and what does TNT intend to gain from that sort of exchange? All right. First things first, you should know that it is a regional conference. Um, and why focus on water loss? We focus on water loss because, um, well, this is actually coming out of the water loss specialist group of the Caribbean Water and Wastewater Association. So that's the association for water sector um, professionals within the region, right? Um, with the, with the Ministry of Public Utilities um, and IWA, which is an, an international association for water professionals, and of course the Water and Sewage Authority, yes. right? But the emphasis on water loss is because of the fact that a lot of water is actually being lost through leaks and a number of different types of, um, of losses. So this is actually produced water that is actually being lost. So you're not gaining an economic value from it. Now, the thing about it is that this is a situation that is not unique to Trinidad and Tobago. It's something that is taking place all over the world. And I mean, when you go out there in, in, in the international sphere, in the regional sphere, you would hear all the issues as it relates to, you know, non-revenue water. So what the conference in itself focuses on is the new technologies within the field um, and sharing the knowledge so that we can all learn from each other mm -hmm. to improve the, 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 I would say, the water loss um, to the non-revenue sector yeah. within the, the country so that we can min definitely minimize it, yeah. right? Now, I know that we earlier we touched on the average citizen and what they can do, but how can, let's say, farmers who use yes. a lot of water, yes. is it that they need to use recycled water on their crops? I mean, what sort of advice you can give to farmers who have to wet their crops from time to time? Okay. So there are a number of different avenues um, for farmers. So there, well, recently, um, I should tell you that there is an, there's actually a, a standard now whereby um, farmers can actually use reused water, and that is water that would have come from, um, from, from wastewater treatment plants. Mm -hmm. So there's a standard in terms of how do you treat it based on the type of crop that you actually do have, right? And then with regards to farming in itself, there are a number of activities. So for on-farm water management. So you could consider 
what type of application do you use? Do you use sprinklers? Do you use drip irrigation? You know, so there are a number of different um, avenues you can you can use. Then based on your the, your system itself, you can you could you can use a mix of things like mulching. You could use intercropping. You could think about the types of crops that you use, right? So there are a number of different um, yeah. different avenues. And I asked the question mm -hmm. for the farmers because I know, for example, we have a new farming technique, the aquaponics. Yes. And that uses a lot of water. That uses a lot um, of water, yes. And so yes. any advice for people who are using that particular farming system? Okay. So for aquaponics, um, for a lot of it, it's, it's very much um, cyclic. Right. Right. So it's not to say that the water will be released um, directly into the environment. You right. know, in a, so it's a kind of somewhat of a closed loop um, system mm -hmm. add, added to which um, so you have the aquaculture part of it, and then you also have the irrigation of your crop. So everything, you know, should be basically in, in balance. Yeah. 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 Um, and any other programs you want to mention that, you know, WASA may be working on or the ministry may be working on as it relates to um, sanitizing and, of course, preserving the water resource? Okay. So one of the things that I, that I, I, I mentioned from the, the very beginning is this project that actually... Um, is going to be launched in Tobago uh, later on this week, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's a crew plus uh, project. And basically what it is, is it focuses on improving both the provision of water and wastewater um, services within that entire community. So that's a project that's actually coming out of the ministry. There are persons from WASA on it. My, my myself I is actually yes. is on it, right? Um, but it's actually being implemented by ARIC, which is a local um, organization within uh, within Charlottesville. So that's one. I just want to tell you about the Adopter River sure. program mm -hmm. again, which is a program which takes into consideration the integrated water resources management approach. And what it does is it encourages all sectors of society. So business people, schools, um, Trinidad and Tobago as a whole in management of the country water resources. So there are a number of different activities you can actually take part of. You can do school competitions. Um, you can do voluntary affluent cleanup. Like I would have mentioned, you know, if you have a, 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 a garage and you're releasing, you know, your affluent or even from, from farming or from a de any different application, mm -hmm. right? So there's also reforestation. There are a number of different activities that come under it. And one of the things that they would have also introduced is the um, to be able to 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 utilize um, or do water management projects under the Adapter River project. Mm -hmm. um, separate and apart from that, I think it would have been last very early last year. The ministry would have launched um, a national rainwater harvesting initiative, and that would focus on you know providing water for domestic purposes. Right? What is the importance of that? It's so that everyone can have a very much of a reliable supply. But even beyond that, it's not only harvesting the water, but it's ensuring that you have, you know how to treat with your water and there are a number of downstream industries that can be developed from this National Rainwater Harvesting Project because there's an educational component to it of course. as well. Ms. McMillan, yeah. let me thank you so much for coming in on this very important day, World Water Day. Mm -hmm. And I know Today. that anybody who's looking, if they want to get more information, they can go to WASA's website and their social media pages yes. for more information on that. So thank you once again. Thank you. And that was Ms. Marissa McMillan, the watershed planner at the Water Resources Agency attached to WASA, just giving us some tips on how we can preserve and sustain our natural resource. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. Na, 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 